And now to an update from the moon. We got some new images beamed back today from the first American-made rover to land on the lunar surface since the Apollo missions. You're looking at the landing gear of Odysseus making contact with the surface of the moon. And, and here's another angle. Despite rolling over, basically sitting sideways, the company partnering with NASA on that mission is calling it a success so far, and they are still receiving data as of earlier today. So for more, let's bring in Dr. Paul Sutter. He is an astrophysicist and NASA advisor. Uh, Dr. Sutter, what do you make of the updates that we've seen so far? This is a, a remarkable achievement all around. You know, landing on the moon is incredibly difficult, especially doing it autonomously. The last 15 minutes or so of the spacecraft had no human intervention whatsoever. It was only onboard systems that were in charge of guidance, propulsion, landing. And yeah, it wasn't perfect. It, it it essentially tripped on a rock on the way down. But nothing's perfect. This is how we learn. This is how we adapt. This is how we solve challenges to make the next one even better. And I got to ask you about this other piece of space news, this near miss today between a NASA spacecraft and a big old hunk of space junk, this dead Russian satellite coming within, I don't know, 65 feet of each other. Yeah. I feel like we were just talking about this possibility like last week. And now this, what would you think of that? Yeah. This is a very real problem. There are over 10,000 satellites in orbit around the Earth. About 9,000 of them are still active. Plus, there's another 25,000 just pieces of junk, little bits of metal uh, strung around in orbit. And the problem with this is that these are traveling at tens of thousands of miles per hour. These two satellites that almost crashed were not steerable. We could not avoid the collision if they were on a collision course. And if they were to smash into each other, they would create a debris cloud that would continue to orbit the Earth for years, if not decades to come, posing a hazard to every other satellite mission in orbit around the Earth. How far away do you think we are from having a, I don't know, an orbiting dump truck that can clean some of that stuff up? <laughs> Unfortunately, this is in a very, very difficult challenge because it's very expensive to get objects up into orbit. And so to have a dump truck essentially means you have to get the dump truck up into orbit. It needs to maneuver to attach onto the satellite and then either needs to bring it down into the atmosphere or kick it way up into a much higher orbit. All of that takes energy. All of that takes propellant and usually involves sacrificing the dump truck in the mission itself. So there are no easy solutions. The best path forward is for governments and private companies to work together to ensure that all missions, all satellites have a lifetime, have a way of deorbiting themselves at the end of their missions. And when you talk about deorbiting, you're talking about something like a, like a thruster that just pushes it gently back into a into the atmosphere to burn it up? Exactly, that's exactly it. Either push it into the atmosphere where it burns up or push it up into a very, very far orbit where we don't have to worry about it for a long time. More thrusters in space, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Paul Sutter, thank you so very much for joining us. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.